Um, as a guy who's living in diaspora, what do you think about this change, this transition, this change of government? What What do you What was your What ran through your mind when it happened? Well, um, not being a politician right. <laughs> myself. <laughs> I don't know. I think a Guyanese yearned for something new and better and different, something that would help them in life. And I think um, over the last 22 years, 23 years, I think... Um, as a Guyanese living in diaspora, what do you think about this change, this transition, this change of government? What, what, do you, what, was your, what ran through your mind when it happened? Well, um, not being a politician right. <laughs> myself, I don't know. I think a Guyanese yearned for something new and better and different, something that would help them in life. And I think um, over the last 22 years, 23 years, I think um, people weren't, their lives weren't progressing. They, they, they felt stagnant. I mean, like me, I mean, back in the day when I left Guyana, I. I mean, I have to say, I felt the same way back then, you know, and um, then I, I, I spent... Kadri, sorry about this. Let, let, me, let me do this. Mm -hmm. I forgot to turn on my mic, so mm -hmm. let me re-ask the mm -hmm. question. Mm -hmm. the, the question is, what was going through your mind when this government, when the government of Guyana changed? Um, so, so continue. Yeah, yeah. I, I think um, Guyanese wanted more. They mm -hmm. felt that their lives were stagnant. Mm -hmm. And um, they yearn for change, as you know, that's what they run on change. Um, it was time, right? Yes. And um, for me, as I said, I'm not a politician, but mm -hmm. as a Guyanese, um, I wanted to um, see something better for the Guyanese people. Um, and I think, I think they got what they were, were yearning for, and a change. And, and we see every day, we, we get on the internet and we see the city's cleaned, we see um, Guyanese are sort of celebrating, they st they're still celebrating, you know, and we see things that make them happy, yes. you know, and I, I think for me that makes me happy as well, you know, but I don't live in Guyana, so I don't know what, what <laughs> Guyanese are feeling or what they're going through, I mean, I just see through their eyes and because I, you know, I, I'm always on the internet, I read a lot, so I know what's going on, but um, I, I wish Guyana well. I, I hope um, going forward mm -hmm. Guyanese will be able to um, see um, things they, they, they really wanted, you know, they yearn for. So You're an avid traveler. When did this passion for travel begin? Oh my goodness. I'm glad you asked that question, um, yeah. Selwyn, because um, my uh, high school teacher, um, the name, his name is Mr. Glasgow, mm -hmm. he was my inspiration. This guy made geography seem so exciting. Wow. And yes, and when um, you put something in your head, you know, it, 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 it sort of lives there. It lived there, I should say. So um, over the years, um, I, I would always look back and say, I, I, I was so inspired by Mr. Glasgow's you know, presentation of geography, and I would love to travel the world. And um, so, he... yeah, I think he lives in California. If you if you were listening to me, Mr. Gasgo, wow. Um, and I told myself that I would travel the world. And mm -hmm. would you believe it? I have been to twenty five countries since I'm living in America alone. Andrew. When I lived in Guyana, I traveled um, in the Caribbean. I had pen pals, and I, I visited in Barbados, Trinidad, yeah. and, and things like that. But. Over the years, I, 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 I think I have conquered Europe. I love Europe. I love traveling to there. You know why? Because if you, when you go to like England, England is sort of the gateway to Europe, mm -hmm. where you can take a boat, you can take a train, you could fly, and you can go visit any of these countries. And I've been to Amsterdam, I've been to Paris, I've been to um, Florence and Rome, and, and um, I've been to um, uh, Oslo, Norway. You know, I've been to um, which Scotland. One, which one resonates with you? Paris. I've Paris. been there five times already. Oh my God. And I've been to the south of France. I, t I flew into Paris where my friend lives and then 
then we went to Nice. I even walked that carpet, you know, with the Cannes Film yeah. Festival. Uh -huh. And then we took um, a, a bus. Um, we took the scenic route into um, Monaco. Mm. And it all started because, you know, I wanted to spend my birthday in a different part of the world every year. So okay. for the last happens, 10 years. Tomorrow happens to be your birthday. <clears throat> Huh. So, <laughs> no, I prefer to spend it with you, Cal, Mr. Ann Selwyn. So, um, so over the last 10 years, that's what I've been doing, uh -huh. you know, and it has been an incredible journey traveling and people don't, un people don't know how beautiful it is, how knowledgeable it is, how colorful it is. I mean, I went to um, um, Thailand, I went to Bangkok and the, the culture is so amazing the people are so beautiful they're so talented and let me ask you i went yes yes let me ask go this. ahead if, if, if <laughs> you had to go to your favorite place with your favorite music your favorite book your favorite drink where would this place it be? has to be paris paris oh what book goodness. would you be reading oh my god um murder on the panace Pan 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 bridge or something like that okay. or you what know music would love you in be paris what music um, would you be listening to Oh my God! Um, something about Paris. I just love that place. I just I, love. I love France. Period. Love France. I would. I, the day I win the lottery, I'll be spending half of my year in Paris. <laughs> and your favorite drink? <laughs> uh, water. Water. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. <laughs> I drink. I drink a lot of water. I just love water. GCA, Ghana Cultural Association. Mm -hmm. You were once the public relations director. Mm -hmm. What were some of your duties? Well. I covered everything. Um, mm -hmm. I covered the entire weekend of events. I did all of the picture taking, the photography, I did all of the writing, the PR, and I would review um, the weekend of events after every, it's all said and done. So I did a lot of, I did a lot of work for the Guyana Cultural Association. Mm -hmm. I spent mm -hmm. 10 years, I think. 10 years? Yeah, I spent 10 years what, what doing would, that. What would be the appeal to, what would you say to the average Guyanese mm -hmm. as to why they should be a member? Well, it would have to be their personal choice. I mean, mm -hmm. for me, I, I love the Guyanese culture. It's so diverse and so beautiful and cultural, whatever. Um, for me, um, it, it, that, that was the draw for me. You know, I wanted to help and I wanted to promote the Guyanese culture. And that is why I became a member. In addition, I just love, I always like to help. I'm, I'm a volunteer mm -hmm. and I, I would volunteer my, my time to do anything. You know, I, I also volunteer my time at, at um, the New York um, Coalition for Shelter uh -huh. over 10 years. I would, you know, forego my um, Thanksgiving dinner at home and I would go serve food there. I mean, it was just like, okay, I prefer to be serving the homeless <laughs> as opposed to sitting at the I table like eating, you know, whatever. But yeah, I just I just love doing those oh, things. I just love doing that. For, for young, young people who want to get into journalism what advice would you give them well I would say please it's a noble profession I know it's not lucrative uh -huh. but it's knowledgeable it's it's um, you get to meet so many beautiful talented people you know and um, even if you if, if you even if you don't do it full-time you're not a full-time journalist and like me who's a contributing writer I'm a part-time you know mm -hmm. freelancer I think you, you get so, so much from sharing your knowledge and sharing your writing experiences and um, meeting people and chatting and talking with people and hearing their stories mm -hmm. and everything and stuff. And even covering assignments in the community, you know, to promote your community, you know. So come on, come on and join me. I, I, like I would that. love to have some people join me, some kids join me, I should you, say, youth. You cover the Caribbean community. Mm -hmm, there is this energy. Let's 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 talk Brooklyn, Labor Day, um, weekend. Mm -hmm. There's an energy that outsiders experience and they talk about when they come to New York, in Brooklyn. What is this energy? How can it be described? Oh my goodness, it's pulsating. Yes. I mean, you know, the vibrancy of the Caribbean culture. I mean, it gets me out on the road, right, with my camera. Yes. I'm like running about like a maniac trying to capture last this year I, I captured the um the children's costume competition mm -hmm. you know in brooklyn and that was phenomenal i am telling you i had such a great time and and every year i just look forward to the labor day weekend 
uh, as a matter of fact, I'm one of just a few reporters that cover all of the mass camps. This year, I covered all over of the mass camps. I covered over 15 mass camps. I was out almost every night of the week and on the weekend, visiting the mass camps, interviewing the designers, talking about their journey. You know, designing costumes. The majority of them are Trinidadians, because you know, you know that's the that's the the, the Trinidad fever. Mm -hmm. You know, these people are so, it's in their blood, it's in their bloodstream, this carnival. So um, that is something that I love doing. I'm very passionate about going out there and, and, and covering the car carnival over the Labor Day weekend. And um, since the Ghana Cultural Association usually have their folk festival around that time, yeah. I used to do a lot. I would cover the Kwekwe and cover the um, literary hang and sometimes the symposium. And I was the co-chair um, of the um, awards um, committee on the awards committee. When do you arrest? So Canada? no, I don't. I don't. I don't. Can you see how skinny I am? <laughs> I, I get five hours of sleep. I, I thought it was your passion in the gym. I, I, <laughs> no, gym. I don't. I know. I don't do the gym. I don't do the gym at all. I, it's just. It's just. I, I'm driven all the time. Right. You know. I get to these assignments, and I'm like, I get home at night time. And then I would either blog about it, put it on my Facebook page at 2 a.m. I would tell, I would say, Tendry, what is wrong with you? Why don't you go to sleep? I know you have to go to work the next day, but no, I don't. Because it's, you know, it's this burning desire in me. It's like a fire in the belly in the to fire. do. It's a fire in the belly, you know, and you have to do, you have to do, you know, you have to do it. When you, when you feel that passionate and that driven about something, that you want to do, you just do it. And that's yes. what, that's why I don't rest. I don't rest. Let's take a quick break. Thank you. <laughs> we are back with Tangerine Clark. Tangerine, my, my good friend, Cork Delpesh, who is a, a Caribbeanese um, makeup artist, mm -hmm. he said that in my interview with him, that food and laughter bind Caribbean together bind Caribbeans together. That's mm. something we have in common. Mm. What are your thoughts on that? Food. Well, I'm not a foodie. I don't eat that much. You? No. I mean, you know, apart from, you know, eating my rice, which my mom, <laughs> my mom cooks. You must have the rice. Right? <laughs> you must have that rice at Maine's table. Mm -hmm. um, but laughter. Oh, my goodness. Mm -hmm. I mean, my life is predicated on laughter. I love to laugh. As you know, I, I'm a giggler. Yes, I know. I giggle all the time. And um, I think he's right. But when it comes to the food part, um, I am not, I'm not big up on food. I, I don't eat that much. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not you know, a big food I, Yeah, I'm not a food myself. person. But, but yeah, let's laugh every day. Let's ha <laughs> ha every day. It's, it's really good for the soul, I would You say. mentioned uh, handwriting. Your stories mm -hmm. back in the day. Mm -hmm. Now we have social media and we have all kinds of instruments. Yes. How has social media, Facebook and all the various forms of social media, impacted the way you do journalism? Oh my goodness, it's instant. Um, mm -hmm. So, with every instant. And as I mentioned before, the fact that I would go to an assignment uh -huh. and I would come home at one or two o'clock in the morning and I would still go to my Facebook page and I would upload all of those pictures, uh, you know, just put out the blurb. Uh -huh. I just love the fact that everything is just right away. It's instant. And I can put that up, you know, at um, one o'clock in the morning and someone can see it at one ten. Isn't that fascinating? I like that. I like it's, that. it's 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 beautiful. Is fascinating. That it is, is fascinating. fascinating. So yeah. I, I love social media. I love my Facebook friends. I think I have 1,900 of them right now. <laughs> and I love all of them because you know what? They're, they're encouraging, they, they motivate me, they inspire me to do what I love to do. And, um, and I thank them. So you enjoy that? I enjoy it. I enjoy it immensely. I love it. I enjoy it immensely. Yeah. 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 Where are you most happy? Um, in my own skin. I, I just love me. I, I just love. <laughs> I'm inspired by myself. I'm, I'm, I inspire myself, I should say. So um, I love me, and I love the things that I do. And I, I think I have I have tunnel vision. I look Your straight. Focus. I I have tunnel vision. I look straight ahead to what I want to do, and I go after it. 
and that's what I tell people. I share with people and I say, you know, don't let anyone tell you that you can't do something. And, and here's the thing, Tangerine, that you I, know? you know, you have received citations and awards and so on, yet you're so humble. Oh. What keeps you grounded? I don't see why people should be grounded and people shouldn't be humble. I mean, you're doing something that you like and, and, and you know, no one can take that away from you. So why would you not be humble and be, you know, um, and, and care about what you do and, and things like that. But for me, um, I just love people. I love sharing what I do and um, I don't have an air about it. I mean, I, I you know, don't... those citations and, and, and so on, awards that you've received, which one of them gave you pause that made you think, you know what, I, I, I'm being recognized for whatever. Which, which one? Oh my goodness, that proclamation from New York City Hall. Wow. I came all the way from Guyana, from Lodge Village. Uh -huh. This little girl, skinny girl, very shy. I can't believe it. I received a proclamation from New York City Hall. This is New York, New York. You know what I'm saying? This is like one of the greatest city in the whole wide world. You know, so I, 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 I feel inspired, you know, because I was there, but not only that, I feel humbled by the fact that, you know, um, the Guyanese, Guyanese people recognize me for what I do. Yes. You know, and I, I, I love to share, I love to share what I do with them, and I'm, I'm happy that they recognize that I'm doing this for them and with them, you know, so I want to say thanks to the Guyanese community for recognizing everything that I do and for following me on Facebook, for liking my pictures. Um, going back to the um the unity march in brooklyn mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. selvin some pictures alone got over 500 hits one picture wow from i i i shot over 500 pictures and i put up uh, a spectacular album of that historic day and i was blown away by that you know i i was i was i couldn't believe it so what many is gratifying, people. What is gratifying for you about what you do? That, I, that people are listening to me mm -hmm. and people are reading my articles in, in Caribbean Life newspaper and people are telling me, oh, I, saw, I saw your pictures, I love your pictures. You know, that, that makes me feel really good is, and is, makes me want to go further, you know, and, and share more and more, you know. Is there a particular story or person or that's a story that you would love to cover? Hmm, the White House, maybe. The White House. Selman, would you believe I, um, I volunteered on President Obama's, both of his, um, both terms when he ran, I volunteered uh, on his campaigns. And um, just after the first campaign, I called up my um, congressman, I think it was, and I said, you know, I would love to go to the White House. And I um, said, okay. So I applied and um, I was vetted. It took six months. But after six months, I toured the White House. Wow. And um, after then, I would, anytime Obama is in town, I would be out by the road corner with my camera. My uncle even said to me, Tandri, why are you stalking Obama? I said, I'm not stalking President <laughs> Obama, but I, I'm telling you right now, one of these days, I'm going to be in the same room as this guy. He said, oh, okay, would you believe I went to the United Nations the other day and I photographed the president of the United States of America. Wow. And so, you know, when you have something in your head and you, you tell yourself you're going to do something, listen. Yes. It's going to happen. You do will it. do it. Mm -hmm. You just have to be focused. What was, the most, what you, what what was the most challenging and painful story you've ever done? Oh my goodness, I interviewed um, um, a breast cancer survivor. I don't know if she's still alive. But this woman was absolutely mesmerizing. Her story was mesmerizing. I could not believe the things she went through. And she was sitting in front of me telling me this story, how it all started and how this cancer came back. I mean, and it's, it's sort of, sort of um, poignant right now because this is um, Breast Cancer Awareness Month, yes. mm -hmm. you know, and I'll be covering a couple of uh, marches. Um, so that was, uh, I, I, my heart was like beating when, I, when, when she was talking about wow. how this cancer affected her and how she survived it and the things she went through, but she, st she 
she kept on going and going. Mm -hmm. That that was that was a uh, very very. In the chat room, Claire said, "Tell it, tell it, citrus, fruit, fashion, laughter, and Facebook." <laughs> <laughs> I guess those are the things that bind Caribbean together. Absolutely. Uh, what are you most proud of? I'm proud of the things that I've done in, in done in my life so far. I mean, I think I have so much more to give and so much more to do. <laughs> so I'm proud of myself for for doing all the things I said that I would do. You know, so. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> um, what are you most thankful for? My mom, mm -hmm. my mother, and I have a son who is um, 25 years old. 25. And he's just as independent as me. I hardly see him sometimes because he's busy doing everything that I do. You know <laughs> what I'm saying? He's always on the go. So yeah, I'm thankful for my mother. My mother is an amazing, amazing person. I always say that when my mom was born, yeah. the mold was broken, you know, because sometimes I, I, this woman is so kind, mm -hmm. so generous, a great cook. She's always, you know, cooking <laughs> so that I can eat and all these things. So I, I'm grateful for my mother. Really. When you think about Guyana or being Guyanese, what comes to mind? About being Guyanese. Um, Guyanese are amazing people, I should say. They're, they're very um, um, uh, friendly. Uh -huh. They're very friendly. And um, I don't know, they, they, they're, they're great people. I think they're one of the best set of people in the Caribbean. Um, even though we're not from the Caribbean, from South America. But still, you know, I think we stand out as a people in the Caribbean because of our, our culture. Um, her, it's so diverse, you know, our, oh my God, our foods, the foods, oh my goodness. Yeah. You know, there's no one in the Caribbean that can cook like Guyanese. <laughs> no, I'm serious. I tasted sorrel from, an, from the Jamaicans. I almost said, what is this? This is not sorrel, this is sugar water. Mm -hmm. You know, but I have to say, uh, Guyanese are, are amazing people and I'm glad that I'm a Guyanese. Of all the stories you've covered, mm -hmm. what still surprises you about your approach to journalism? Oh, that's a tough question. I don't know. What's my approach? I, I, I don't know. I, I, I approach everything that I do um, with urgency, mm -hmm. um, with um, kindness, and um, with, with a will and determination to, um, to say what I want to say and to promote that person to the best of my ability, you know? Let me open up that question a little bit. When you get a story, mm -hmm. what, what, are, what are a few things mm -hmm. that go through your mind that you, you must consider before doing this story? Well, first of all, um, that person has to be someone who, of interest, okay. right? Someone who would um, make the story uh, compelling and interesting. Mm -hmm. And someone I, uh, you know, who I can do an interview with and get a really good story from. I mean, you know, because sometimes you, you, you chat with someone and then when you get home and you turn on the tape recorder, I have to improvise, you know, sometimes. Because I, I don't know who that person is, you know, sometimes. I mean, it's terrible sometimes. But, um, but, but, but I, I don't know. I just would just want to chat with someone who's interesting, someone who's going to give me a good story. And someone, and, and, the story that someone would want to read yeah. and sort of talk about years to come. You know what I'm Have saying? Have you ever so, written a story you regret? No, uh -huh. no, not, I don't think so. I mean, I go out on an assignment because I want to do that assignment and because I want to feature that person. Yes. I want to talk about what that person's doing in their life or, or doing for the, for the community or for society or for the world. So, no, I don't think, I don't think, I don't think I've ever regret, you know, Over your career. Story. Right? Mm -hmm. The long arc of your career as a journalist. What have you discovered about yourself? Um, that I'm driven. Uh -huh. You know, that I am I, I, I'm unstoppable in terms of if I want to do something, I, I, nobody can tell me that I can't. Give do us it. a situation when, um, you don't have to mm -hmm. call names and all that, but a situation when the obstacles were insurmountable. You were told no, and or, or, or you can't find the person, or you know, 
the scheduling was off. What happens then? For instance, if, if the scheduling is off, I mean, I am like a really kind person. And mm -hmm. I, I just don't beat, pe beat up on people. Okay. If, for instance, someone's not available, I said, okay, I'll do it another time. Or, you know, maybe, you know, you're not ready or something. You know, but I, I just don't worry about it. I mean, I don't stress about it. Because that's that's not why I'm a journalist. I'm a journalist to promote people and to talk great things about people and um, and promote them in the best way I, I you know I can. You're so. a busy woman, Tanjiri. This oh, is tell me obvious. About it. <laughs> Very busy. Hardly sleep. Um, <laughs> finish the sentence. I look forward to Sunday evenings too. Read a book, man. Oh <laughs> gosh, I read a hundred and four right books. Um, on the fire, I think it's Tom Clancy. Ah. Yes, I'm reading him. And then after that, I'm going to be reading um, um, The Contract by um, Miss McClymont. She's Rosalind. an amazing, Rosalind McClymont. Yes, yes. She's an, a, an amazing guidance writer. Yes. So I read her first book, Middle Ground. Mm -hmm. Oh, it took place in Africa, She's in America. She's an amazing writer. So I would be reading a book. I just love to read. Oh, my goodness. I love watching documentaries and things like that. But reading, it's like, um, it's like, I, I, I'm, you know, when you thirst for water, I, I thirst for reading. You know, for so. those days when you don't feel like getting up mm -hmm. and doing what you're supposed to be doing, who or what gets you up? <laughs> there's, there's no day like that. There's so. no day like that. No. You're always <laughs> up and going. <laughs> no, 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 no. I, I stress myself out to go and cover four assignments sometimes in one day. I'm serious. Sometimes I would leave Brooklyn, drive to Queens, you know, if I have to go to Manhattan, you know, like just recently I went all the way to the Bronx to cover a fashion show for a Guyanese designer because I felt it was my obligation, you know, and um, I should do it, you know. No, I get out of bed all excited and, and happy every day and when I get up I say, I feel the security of God's protecting presence oh, I like and I that. trust him to make my way safe and sure. I believe in the good and I expect good to come forth because I rely on God's <laughs> power to, you know, to deal with my life. If, That's what I do every day. If you could go back in time, mm -hmm. what would you tell that 15 year old girl? Oh my goodness, you're going to be an amazing person. Wow, just go after whatever you want to do. Go after what you, you know, you, you set your mind to do. You, you could do it. Tantri, one of the things that readily comes to mind when someone or someone, or whenever I see you, mm -hmm. is the array of colors. What is this? And they're, they're, they all work. They all, you know, there's this synergy that happens. Mm -hmm. The symphony, I should mm -hmm. say, that happens. What is this passion you have for colors? I don't know. It's in my blood, man. I'm I'm from Guyana. I mean, we, uh, for me, I like that. it's 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 just vibrancy. It's it makes you feel good. Yeah. Color makes you feel so good. And I'm always blending these amazing colors. And they, as you say, there's a symphony when I put on all these things, mm -hmm. and they look really good. If you know, you were, so I, I just love colors. If you were to describe yourself, adventurous or cautious? Adventurous, man. Are you kidding me? I went to Morocco three years ago. I went to Morocco and I climbed a mountain, thirty-two thousand feet altitude. What? I was like, what am I doing up here? You know, but it was this adrenaline. This adrenaline was pumping through my veins. I was like, and I climbed this thing and I went really. Up. When we got to the top, there was this beautiful waterfall, this tranquility. You know, when you got to the top, so. I am such an adventurer and there's so much more for me to discover. We have gotten to the top and <laughs> it's like I've hardly scratched the surface, Tangerine. <laughs> but I must ask you this question. Mm -hmm. What makes you laugh out loud? Oh my God, myself. I just, <laughs> I love myself. I just love to laugh because it makes me feel good inside, you know. And I think um, when you laugh with people, you yes. sort of... It's, it's sort of this sort of you transcend how you feel uh -huh. you know about yourself and, and, and people feel it it rings right through to that person so I just love to laugh thank you <laughs> thank you so thank much thank you so Selwyn. much was it 
Was it what you expected? Oh my God, what? you are so amazing. I have to say thank you that you've made me feel so comfortable, you know, being in front of this microphone. You're amazing. Thank you so much. You're I appreciate welcome. you inviting me over. You're welcome, Tangerine. Anytime. And this is Selma Collins saying thank you all for tuning in this evening. Fear not what fear whispers to you. Fear your obedience to it. Good night. God bless.